Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about stroke pathologies, specifically the etiologies of each stroke uh, and how to pull apart a question stem. One big point that I'd like to make clear before we go on is the difference between uh, the two types of stroke, hemorrhagic versus infarction. Uh, an infarction would be a, an occlusion of a vessel, blockage of blood flow, whereas hemorrhagic stroke would be a bursting, a bleeding of the vessel. I want to make that very clear because it's really essential to what I'm about to say. Hemorrhagic stroke, burst, a stroke being an infarct, blockage of the blood flow. All right, so first off, you can identify three variables to uh, kind of break apart these etiologies into. First would be hypertensive. Central to the pathophysiology of the stroke is hypertension. You know, this is a patient that presents with malignant hypertension, you know, 200 over 120, and all of a sudden they just clinically deteriorate really rapidly and they start having mental symptoms. Second would be hemorrhagic. Uh, the key here is that they like to tell you that on a non-contrast CT, you see areas of hyperdensity, you know, you, the areas light up on the brain on a non-contrast CT, and that's immediately when you take the CT. This is in contrast to an infarction where on a non-contrast CT that you take right away, you're not going to see anything. You're going to see areas of hypodense um, brain tissue maybe a couple hours afterwards, but if you take it immediately, you might not even see anything at all. So that's kind of the, the differentiating factor there. And then finally is small vessels versus large vessel. You'd be able to tell this apart where it would be a subarachnoid hemorrhage bleeding directly outside the brain parenchyma versus kind of inside the tissue itself. All right, so moving on, we have our five etiologies. The first would be Charcot-Bouchard microaneurysms, a lacunar infarct, a secular aneurysm, amyloid angiopathy, and then finally we have an embolic or thrombotic infarction. All right, so first, Charcot-Bouchard uh, microaneurysms have a hypertensive etiology. They involve hemorrhage and they are small vessels. Uh, this is in contrast to lacunar infarcts, which have a hypertensive etiology and are small vessel as well, but do not involve hemorrhage. They are a, an infarction, blockage of blood flow. It's really important to differentiate these two because they both occur in the basal ganglia, and they're really the two that you're going to confuse. It's usually going to be lacunar infarct. They don't like to test on Charcot-Bouchard microaneurysms as much, but if you see bleeding into basal ganglia as opposed to a hypodense area, the bleeding would be a Charcot-Bouchard microaneurysm. Then we have secular aneurysms. This is the traditional thunderclap headache uh, where it's a hypertensive etiology. It involves hemorrhage and it is a large vessel. This is subarachnoid manifestations uh, outside the parenchyma. Then we have amyloid angiopathy. Uh, this really has nothing to do with hypertension. It's more to do with amyloid deposition into the tissues. Uh, then we have hemorrhage uh, with amyloid angiopathy and involves small vessels as well. One big point to make is that amyloid angiopathy is the most common cause of low bar hemorrhage. If they put that in the question stem, you really want to consider amyloid angiopathy. Then we have embolic or thrombotic infarctions, uh, kind of the polar opposite of Charcot-Bouchard microaneurysms. Uh, there's no hypertensive etiology, uh, no hemorrhage, because it's an infarction and involves large vessels, so that's going to be bleeding outside the parenchyma, a subarachnoid bleed. So that's really all there is to the discussion. I hope this kind of helps you differentiate the etiologies, and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.